Friends, good evening and welcome to this Good Friday Tenebrae service with First Baptist Church of Ann Arbor. The word tenebrae is a Latin word for darkness. This is a traditional kind of service in which passages from the Gospels pertaining to the final hours of Jesus are read and reflected upon. And as this happens, candles are extinguished one by one, indicating the abandonment of Jesus and finally his death. We invite you, if you're willing, to dim the lights where you are, or even perhaps to turn them off, uh, to more fully experience the darkness. Again, welcome. Let's begin our worship with prayer together. Most gracious God, look with mercy on your family gathered here, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, given into sinful hands, and suffered death on the cross. Strengthen our faith and forgive our betrayals as we enter once more to the way of his passion. Through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Would you join with me in our responsive reading of Psalm 22? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? From the words of my groaning. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He committed his cause to the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Be not far from me, for trouble is near and there is none to help. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My strength is dried up like a potsherd and my tongue clings to my jaws. You have laid me in the dust of death. They have pierced my hands and feet. They divide my garments among them, for my clothes they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far off. O you, my help, hasten to my aid. Look on me, 
When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord? He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to the one by whom he is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi? Jesus replied, You have said so. Is it possible that when each disciple, one by one, around the table, raised the trembling question, Lord, is it I? Is it possible that they really did not know? Was this the most devastating horror of that night for them? That none of them knew for certain what he would do with Jesus? And what of Judas Iscariot? He also asked the question, Lord, is it I? Was the question such an easy lie for him? Or is it possible he did not even then fully grasp the treason in his own heart? Here is the pathetic truth about all the friends of Jesus. We do not yet know all that we will do against him or how or why. Each of us may ask for ourselves, Lord, is it I? His first answer is a haunting return of the question, You have said it. His final answer will be a prayer, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, 
My betrayer is at hand. There is a proper sleep. There is a sleep of surrender, a sleep that is trust, even a sleep that is a kind of praise. That is the way Jesus slept, for example, in the stern of a boat that rolled in a stormy sea. From this kind of sleep you awake refreshed and emboldened. But there are other forms of sleep, the sleep of indifference, the sleep of abdication or escape, a sleep not so much for resting as for hiding, a refusal for now to be aware. From this kind of sleep, you may awake exhausted. You may wake without awakening at all. The disciples of Jesus are still given to sleeping at all the wrong times and for all the wrong reasons and with the most tragic results. Still he is pleading, watch and pray with me, watch and pray with me. But still in the crucial hours, he is joined in the garden by so few and we who have preferred our sleep to his prayers are strangely fitful, not resting, only running. He is still too lonely a savior. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came out and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. They seize him and take him away. Violent men surround Jesus, bind him, and lead him off. There are shouts of glee, there are shaking fists and angry hands pushing at his back. They've got him. And it's always easy at this moment for disciples to despair for him to hang our heads and lament how powerfully is this violent age against him and against his way. Which is why, especially here, we must remember the deeper truth concerning his capture. The Gospels are so clear that Jesus' enemies did not take him, that instead he completely and commandingly gave himself to them, that Jesus, in fact, conducted his own arrest. No one takes my life from me, I lay it down. 
The powers of darkness seem in command, but even their worst is done on God's terms, not theirs, and serves God's purpose, not theirs. The Prince of Peace is never stronger than when in chains. Grieve, if you like, that the world has hated him so. Grieve that he could not save the world and save himself too. But do not despair of the darkness. It is the hour of darkness but the light has shined in darkness and the darkness is not able to overcome it. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But Peter denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then also, an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Interesting that Peter was willing to defend Jesus with a sword against armed men at the risk of his life. He was brave, if not wise, against the frontal attack of the enemy. What undid him in the end was the whisper of a servant girl from behind. His courage collapsed when he was questioned by a girl. It is rarely before the big threats that we forsake Jesus. More often we are ambushed by a whisper we weaken under unexpected little persistent pressures. We are unprepared for the severe tests of the apparently insignificant. There is little purpose then in asking if we have denied Christ in the face of clear danger. Better to ask about our denials of him in ordinary conversations with strangers and friends, in our regular choices to give or withhold, or in our countless small refusals of daily righteousness. Tonight the rooster crows over us all. As happened with Peter, the Lord turns and looks at us. Under his gaze, let us recall what our lives have been saying of him lately. And perhaps we will know there is still a weeping to be done.
As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes, and the whole council, and they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked Jesus, Are you king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so? Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. And then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas instead. Pilate spoke to them again, Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Everyone present at the trial of Jesus had to choose between Christ and someone else. Pilate had to choose between Christ and the crowd. The chief priests had to choose between Christ and Caesar. The crowd had to choose between Christ and Barabbas. Everyone was casting ballots on that day, and here are the results. Pilate chose a mob. The chief priests chose a dictator. The crowd chose a bandit. They ran Jesus against a murderer, and the murderer won. We do go to remarkable lengths to choose any way but his way. And the ballots are still being cast. You and I have cast ballots again today. The trial still goes on. But as on that first day, Jesus is not the one on trial. We are. And Jesus, our judge, lets us choose. The vote is being cast. He stands before us as he stood before Pilate and utters not a word. We choose, and he utters not a word. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. 
Then the chief priest said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says, They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani? That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, he is calling for Elijah. At once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. 
Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. And when the centurion, who stood facing him, saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly this man was God's son. It is over. The agonies have ended. The excruciating struggle is finished. His eyes, which had once held so much fire, hold no light in them now as they gaze at nothing. He has poured out his final breath and hangs in utter stillness, the Son of God and the Son of Mary is dead. An awestruck centurion mutters, Surely this was God's Son. But for us, there are no words to say. No words. Only sorrow and love and wonder. Lamb, Lamb of God, who, who takes, takes away, away the, the sin of the world, world have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? And now may Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, keep us and strengthen us this night and forever. Amen.